Second Life Church, good morning. We are so glad to have you this morning here on our online church service. We're just glad that you're here. I know worship looks a little bit different this morning. You're at home, but hey, this is a great day to serve and to worship God. So we're glad that you came to join us this morning. Yeah, we're so glad you Happy are. Happy Mother's Day to you. Oh, thank you oh, very man, much. I know, I know. Aww, wherever you are, whether you're in your living room or maybe you're still in bed, maybe you got ready in your Sunday best, or maybe you're just in your jams. We just want to encourage you to participate with us today. We know there's an anointing on this service, and that anointing transmits right through to your living room, wherever you are right now. You know what? I got a couple verses I want to read to set us off here. This is in Psalm 103, and it says, With my whole heart, for my whole life, with my innermost being, I will bow in wonder and love before you, holy God. Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. And this is why, this is why he is our soul celebration. It says, how can I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? You kissed my heart with forgiveness in spite of all I've done. You've healed me inside and out from every disease. You've rescued me from hell and saved my life. You've crowned me with love and mercy. You satisfy my every desire with good things. You've supercharged my life so that I soar again like a flying eagle in the sky. You're a God who makes all things right. That is the God that we're worshiping together wherever we're at this morning. And I'm so thankful for him. Yeah, you bet. So church, let's stand up together. I want you wherever you are. Again, let's stand up. Let's worship God. Before we do that, let's pray. Father, we love you. And again, we are so grateful for everything we just read in Psalm 103. Lord, so everything with our whole heart, with our whole life. Jesus, we come to worship you and exalt you. For you are good and you only do good. And we give you glory. We give you praise for everything that you want to do in our lives and through our lives today. And we give you glory and praise for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
believe that you are moving in our midst right now. Father, we believe that you're moving here in Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. Father, we believe that you are on the move because you're moving your believers. You're moving your church to step up and step out. Father, we believe that we are the revival, that you are working in our hearts and moving us. 
And so we just say, Lord, we are your church. Father, we just stand up and we say, we will be the church. And we will stand for you, Father. We will stand for your truth in our nation, in our province, in our city. And we will tell the world about you. We'll tell the world about your goodness, your kindness, your love. Father, thank you so much for who you are. We say we will do it. Send us. We're sent, church. We're, we're already on the move. And I just want to encourage you, you know, when the pressure comes, like we've seen this week, when the pressure comes, and it always will come, we just stand. Literally, we stand on this word, and we just do what we know to be true. And what do we do when pressure comes again, or this comes at us, or that, that comes at us? We just continue to stand. Having done all to stand, stand, therefore. That's what the word tells us to do. I know that you're with us, church, and we just thank you um, just for, for being who you are. We just encourage you this week as you go out, the church is not a building. The church is God's people. We know when you go to the grocery store this week, when you go out on your walk, when you wave to your neighbor, you're out there sharing the love of Jesus. Let's do that this week, church. So anyways, I was going to say thank you for coming today, but there you are in your living room. So thank you for participating with us today. We're excited for the word that is to come. Pastor Joel's been doing this amazing um, series. But before that, I just want to say a quick happy Mother's Day to all the mamas out there. Maybe the mamas-to-be, maybe the spiritual moms, maybe you who are still literally in the trenches raising your littles. I want to say a very happy Mother's Day to you. You know, in Proverbs 31, it says that you are um, equipped with strength, um, and that, that that's physical, mental, and spiritual strength for your God-given task. Yeah, exactly. I know that's what we need. Even when you don't feel you've got the strength, the Word says that you do. And I love that Proverbs 31 also says that charm and beauty, they're, they're fleeting, they're deceptive, they're superficial. But a woman who fears the Lord, she is to be praised. And so moms, let's make that our ultimate goal because you know what, this parenting game, we can mess up over and over and over. But if we make our ultimate goal to just be women who um, are just in awe of our Lord, right? Worship Him, um, revere Him, um, I just believe that no, nothing else is more important to show our children than our love for him. So we celebrate you. Happy Mother's Day. And if you've got a mom in your life and you have not called her yet, call her. But right after this message. Pastor Joel. That's right. Awesome. Well, as we were just saying, you know, maybe you want to stay here for a second. We want to just make a quick announcement. You know, what we're doing on for this church this entire time is of all this week, we got um, prayer times that are coming up. Yeah. So what we've intentionally done is like you've probably already seen the email. You've seen the couple of the posts that are going out. Church, it's time for us to gather, to pray, to yeah. come together in unity and actually lift up the plan of God that he has for our region, that he has for our city. And so what we're doing, I want to encourage you right now. You're going to hear it again in a little bit. Thank you, Julian. Now, you're going to hear it again like a little bit later on, is at the same time, find your place. This is a great opportunity for you to plug in. There is a slot available. You can check that out on our website. We're going to have all that available. We have nine different prayer sessions that you can come to the church. Make sure you participate in that because God is working. I mean, we're not going to just sing this cute song and sound great. We want, like, Lord, we are revival. We are the awakened ones. And yeah. so we want to be the voice of God Absolutely. in our city. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. I well, just encourage you, too, if you, yeah. if you don't normally join us for our prayer sessions, like, this this is your time. Like Pastor Joel said, there's going to be nine different sessions. We're going to gather in groups of 15 and just pray, pray, pray. And so I encourage you, find your slot and get there. Absolutely. Also, I'm leading on Tuesday night, so come then. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you, sweetheart. And, you know, uh, can we, while you're, while you're standing there or maybe you're sitting on your couch, can we just thank these guys? We got the worship team and we got a lot of tech guys that are here to help us out, make this, make this awesome for you, make this an experience like as if you were here on a Sunday morning. So we want to just thank you guys so much for all that you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, well, everyone. Well, we're glad that you're here, like my beautiful wife, mother of four, has said. And uh, I'm again, happy Mother's Day. I'm so thankful. Hey, Mom, if you're watching, happy Mother's Day to you. Sure appreciate all that you are and who you are to me. Um, and I'm excited for this morning again. And uh, we, we got a word for you today. And I know God's going to be speaking to you right where you're at. So you make sure you get your Bible out. I want you to get a pen and pad out. I know that's old school or an iPad or something. Something to write down because you're going to want to go over some of these notes again. And, of course, if you're 
you're, if you're in our email list and if you want these notes sent to you, we will make sure we get that off to you. If you uh, let us know that you want them, we'll make sure we get those to you. Um, you know, we've been, we started a series a little while ago talk, uh, talk, called Different. And the whole premise behind this phrase, different, is that we and you and I, we are called to live from another realm. And I think that's exactly vital for the season that we're in, that God is actually calling us to live from another realm. And specifically, just a few thoughts with this, it seems to me just for my own self that the Lord has been calling me back to go back to things that I've already heard or things that I've known or grew up hearing, just to go back to it again because of the season that we're in. And so what I find this morning is we're actually going to just take some time to actually go back into something that you've probably heard before. But you know what the good thing is, is that God always has a now word for us. You know, a lot of times you're kind of looking for the new word, and that's great. You know, there's God's doing amazing, powerful things. But sometimes you just need the now word. What is God speaking directly to us? And as a church family, we are right on track with the plan of God for us as a church family, for our assignment here in local, I mean local, in Red Deer, in the area that we influence and we reach. So uh, this morning, I want you to turn to your Bibles to John chapter 17, verse 14 through 17, and we'll kick it off here. I mean, you got your Bibles, and the cool cheat sheet is, is that our guy's already downstairs, and he's helping you out, so you get to see already the screen on there. But we're going to look at it from the Passion Bible, and I want you to see this is the prayer that Jesus prayed for his disciples, and that includes you and I. And he says this, I have given them your message, and that is why the unbelieving world hates them. For their allegiance is no longer to this world because I am not of this world. So why does the unbelieving world hate you? Because of the message that you receive, the message that you believe. And what is that message? The good news of the gospel that Jesus Christ came as, well, he was God sent in the flesh, so now he became man, and he took upon the sin of the world, died with our sin, rose again for our righteousness. And you and I, because we believe in that, the sacrifice of what Jesus paid and what he did on the cross, you and I now are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is the news that we believe, and our allegiance is no longer to this world. Our allegiance is now to him. And this is what the, this is Jesus saying. This is why the world hates you because your allegiance is broken or severed or divorced from this world. And I'm now completely connected to Jesus as my King. He goes on verse 15. He says, I'm not asking that you remove them from the world, but I ask that you guard their hearts from evil. So isn't that interesting? God's not saying I'm going to take them out because it's too dangerous. There's going to be a lot of problems down on this earth. He says, I'm not asking you to take them out. I'm asking that you guard them from the evil one. And here's the good news. You and I are well equipped to live in 2021. No matter what comes our way, God knew all about this. But here's the thing. God put someone bigger on the inside of you than that anything else in the world that could ever try to muster up. Greater is he that is in us. So church, be encouraged by that, that no matter what pressure comes our way, we have someone stronger, mightier on the inside than anything that could ever face us on the outside. That's, that's good news. Then verse 16, they said this, For they no longer belong to this world any more than I do. And verse 17, Your word is truth. So make them holy or set them apart by your truth. And what is the truth? We know this to be the word of God. And God's word is the ultimate highest form of reality that there is. So what Jesus is saying for you and I, if we want to experience the highest level of living, the word of God is able to reveal that to you and I so we can see how God operates, see how God lives, and how I can actually live like God. That's the purpose of eternal life. Eternal life is not just me living forever. Eternal life now is understanding the God kind of life and me now experiencing it, me now actually living it out in my day-to-day life while I'm in the flesh. Hey, oh, man. Now, I want to just show you this one verse in particular, John 17, 14 from the Message Bible, because it brings out a phrase in it that I want to just kind of touch on as we're going to launch into today. And again, verse 14, and says this, I gave them your word. This is again Jesus praying. He says, the godless world hated them because of it, because they didn't join the world's ways just as I didn't join the world's ways. And I want to just emphasize that thought, or I want to emphasize what the words of Jesus here to you for a moment. Jesus, again, he says, I gave them your word. The godless world hated them because of it. Why did they hate us so much? Because they didn't join the world's ways. That's the key. We are not joining the world's ways. We have in front of us, church, an opportunity to participate and to reveal another realm. 
That's the good news, is that you aren't just stuck. I mean, Jesus said you're in this world, but you're not of this world. He says that you don't have to join in the world's ways, just as Jesus never joined in the world's ways. Right? And what does that mean? I will not participate in the world's ways, in their confusion, in their bitterness, in their hatred, in their bitterness. I will not participate in that. Why? Because Jesus came and he revealed to you and I the higher way, the ultimate way, way of living, which is God's ways, again, so that we could participate at a higher level. Jesus has invited us to join his level of thinking. Don't think that Jesus, man, he went through a lot of stuff on his time on earth. People wanted to kill him. The Pharisees, the very ones that he came to rescue, hated him, couldn't stand him. They wanted to throw him off cliffs. They wanted to stone him, but they couldn't touch him because he lived from a higher realm. And you and I, that's not just for the son of God that was just Jesus and he was sovereign, did what he wanted. No, he's invited you and I into that same exact lifestyle and that's the good news of the gospel it's beyond it reaches us spiritually it reaches us emotionally and it reaches us physically it's the whole being that Jesus came to purchase now with my with what's on my heart this morning that I really felt the Lord wanting to bring to our attention again not something that is brand new but something you may have heard of before but we need to just touch on it is just reality that my source of joy is from another realm I want to talk to you and I today about joy. Our joy is not dependent upon the natural realm. And so I want to just again quote this, what Jesus said, that they didn't join the world's ways just like I didn't join the world's ways. So we're going to find, just look at, look at joy from a little bit of the, the kingdom's perspective here uh, this morning. And so the first thought is this, in the world, joy is determined by natural circumstances. Isn't that correct? Like what you're looking at, whatever happens out here will determine if I'm happy or if I'm not. Did I have a good day at work? Well, then therefore I'm happy. Did I have a bad day at work? Therefore I'm mad. Is it, you know, whatever happens on the natural, that's going to be deterrent if I'm going to be happy or not. Now, whereas the kingdom of God, what now is the question I want to throw to you as a believer in Jesus, what's the joy of my life? What keeps me going? What's the excitement? Why do I wake up day to day? What's the joy that motivates you and I? The answer again is very simple and we're going to see it from the word. But the answer is this, my friendship or my relationship with God is my ultimate joy. That's the source of it. This, again, again, looking at the world, what's their source for joy? Anything. If, it's, if something good in the natural happens, you know, if the Flames win a hockey game, I'm happy. You know, if the Stampeders could finally win a great cup again, I'm happy. Then what happens? They're, they're okay. That's not for you and I. Now, it's fine to get, celebrate and rejoice and get happy on those things. That's no problem. But you and I, we've got to have something deeper to us than just depending on a natural thing. Because, again, the natural world changes constantly. Probably like what you're experiencing. We're basically living day to day naturally, figuring out what's going to happen next, but not so in the kingdom. And that's why you and I can throw all of our eggs into the word of God and depend on it because he never changes. His word never changes. So you and I can put full force faith on this and say, I can be rejoiced in my relationship, therefore I actually can. Yeah. So now let me give you a couple of verses here. And I just want to thank everybody that's cheering me on here. It's, it's helpful. <clears throat> Now, look at this, Romans chapter 5, verse 11. In the Passion Bible, it says this. We overflow with triumphant joy. Come on, say it with me, triumphant joy. <laughs> we overflow with this triumphant joy in our new relationship of living reconciled to God all because of Christ Jesus. In the, in the Living Bible, I want you to hear it from this. It says, we now or we, now we rejoice in our wonderful relationship with God all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done in dying for our sins, making us friends with God. What is the ultimate source of our joy? Is understanding the relationship we have with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I've been made a friend of God because of what Jesus Christ has done. Now, you know, I remember hearing this, that I... If you ain't been happy in God, it's because you haven't seen him lately. When you spend time in his presence and you see Jesus for who he is, you can't help but get excited about Jesus because it's Jesus, right? This is what makes heaven heaven. And let me give you a couple of verses just to show this. Psalm 1611 in the Passion Bible, it says this, Because of you, I know the path of life. Can we say that together? Because of you, I know the path of life of life as I taste the fullness of joy in your presence. Where is the fullness of joy? 
Saying it's not in some bar, it's not in some natural thing, it's not at some party, it's not at some sporting event or concert. The fullness of joy is found in the presence of God. Maximum joy, complete joy to the full is actually found in the presence of God. He finishes off by saying it like this. Uh, at your right side, I experience divine pleasures forevermore. Man, this is, this is powerful stuff. Psalm 144, 15 in the Amplified, it says, How blessed, happy, happy. Come on, y'all, happy. It says, How blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and favored are the people whose God is the Lord. You and I, we can actually get just happy being with Jesus. You know, another verse in Psalm, it says, you delight yourself in the Lord, and he gives you the desires of your heart. So if you think about this, you just get real happy about your relationship with Jesus, and he fulfills the desires that are put on your heart. But you're, clearly, we can see from the psalmist here that happy is the man, happy is the woman, whose God is the Lord. Is Jesus the Lord of your life? Then the ultimate source of our life, the ultimate source of our joy is him. That's, he's the foundation for it. Let me show you one more verse on this. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 2 in the Passion Bible. And this is, man, I love this. It says, our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has done for us. Again, not something I do, it's already been done for me. Verse 2, he says, our faith guarantees us, now here's these words, permanent access. You don't get kicked out for bad behavior. You don't get kicked out for not doing it right all the time. You've got permanent access into this marvelous kindness or this grace that has given us a perfect relationship with God. Now look at this last phrase. What incredible joy bursts forth, where? Within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. Now, what's the purpose of all this? What am I trying to re reveal to you and I? That the source, the world's ways for joy is dependent upon natural circumstances. The kingdom's ways of their source of joy is looking to the relationship I've received through Jesus Christ in his sacrifice that I can now approach the Father as if I've never done anything wrong. I now have this status of child of God where I can talk to God as the Father himself, the creator of the universe, will talk to me as a friend talks to face to face with someone else. That's what I have. That's what you and I have. And this is what the joy of the Christian life is all about. It's not a religion because religion tries to get you and I to God, where in the gospel message, it's God trying to get to you. This is a major difference between all the other religions out there and the Christian, that, the Christian life that you and I enjoy and that we live in. Jesus came for us. Why? For personal relationship. And this is the joy that sustains me no matter what comes out here in the natural. I am right with Almighty God. That should sustain us enough. That should keep you in a place of absolute bliss because I'm okay. <laughs> if all this were, if, if this were to end right now, I would know where I'm going because I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, again, looking from where joy comes from, it's from within. And as I keep my eyes fixed on experiencing the glory of God, it's from within. So again, the source of joy from the world is where? It's based on external things. The source of joy for believers comes from within us. It comes from within. And this is the next point I want you to see, or I want you to remind you again, that you are already equipped with the joy of God. You have his joy. How do we know this? Well, let's turn to Galatians chapter 5 for a moment. I want you to see this again. You have heard these verses. Good. We'll hear them again. It's important that we come. Faith doesn't come by having heard it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word. We need to hear the word, so we got to realize what's happening on the inside. In Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23, it says the fruit of the Spirit. I know in the Amplified it says Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit doesn't need to produce fruit. He's already, this is who he is. But he came, I like how it says it in the brackets here, the work which his presence accomplishes. So you got the Spirit of God already on the inside of you. Now, this is the work that he came to fulfill and do on the inside of you. Now, look what he came to bring. He came to bring love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Now, I want you to look back again at verse 22. But again, the work 
which his presence within us accomplishes, one of the first things you see is joy. The proof of the Spirit of God at work in my life is going to be seen through joy. Well, I mean, if you look at that, even the first believers, the disciples, when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, Luke's gospel account actually shows that they left and they were excited. They were like beyond themselves, just happy, prosperous, just all these exciting you know, words and verbs that I could throw out at you. They were so excited because they had received the new birth. And that's the divine, actually, the real purpose that you and I are going to see. How do we know somebody's a believer? Joy is resident on the inside of them. It's there. And here's the thing. You don't have to stir it up. It's already there. You got it there. You're not looking for it from the outside. Say it. I got the joy. I know we probably sang that song in kids' church. You know, I got the joy, 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 joy down in. Where? Down in my heart to stay. Anyway, and I'm so happy. Now, this joy now is not a feeling. It is not an emotion. It is a spiritual force just like faith. How can we say that? Because, again, on the inside, it says the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of it, what's happening on the inside, it's working. It's already there. The joy is already on the inside. Now, all the fruit of the Spirit is developed the same way. So everything that you see in verses 22 and 23, it's all developed the same way. It comes by hearing and now using, or hearing and applying. It's the exact same way for every single one of those fruits. Well, so is faith. You know, how does faith come? We know faith to be a spiritual force. Faith, what, the, what, what faith is able to do, it's, if you kind of picture it like this, faith is a dynamite stick. Joy is the fuse to that dynamite stick. Faith can, like Jesus said, it'll blow up a mountain. It'll take any problem that you may be facing in your life, and it has the ability to blow it out, get rid of it entirely. But joy is the fuse. Joy is like the undergirding your faith. What's, how do I get from the amen, Lord, I believe I receive it, to there it is? Joy is what sustains you. So faith is a spiritual force. You know that. But also joy is a spiritual force. Because, again, I want you to see, look at this verse here, John 15, 11. Jesus said this, and again, you have to kind of read this all in context to actually find out what Jesus is saying. And this is like the whole passage is all about abiding in the vine. I'm the vine, you're the branches, Jesus said. And at the end of this kind of little teaching, he says, I have told you these things that my joy and delight may be in you. So how does joy come? Joy comes by hearing keeping my eyes fixed on the good news of what Jesus said. That's how joy comes. That's how us as believers, how does our joy come? Not from the external. It comes from within, especially looking now at the words of what Jesus said. So if your joy level is down, you have to look, is my word level down? Because if my word level is on par, if I'm looking to the word of God, the response or the, the fruit that should be being seen is joy. I'm not depressed, I'm not shaken, I'm not moved by what happens out here because his word now is dominant in my thinking and in my heart. Therefore, joy is part of the equation. Let me finish it off here. He says this, I've told you these things that my joy and his, like, it's his joy. His delight is on the inside of me. And it says, and that your joy and gladness may be of full measure and complete and overflowing. This is the heart of God. This is the plan of God that you and I just not kind of live our Christian life. Huh, that's cool. Overflowing. Any of everybody ever seen somebody overflowing with joy and laughter? I mean, I got four little kids. So when I see sometimes if you just spend some time, you, you know, make a little joke or something like that, they can take it to the next level and it's not fake. So to right at this moment, at my kids' ages, I am the funniest human being to them on this planet. And it gives me great delight because my jokes, you know, they are what they are. But my kids really enjoy it. So even just seeing them just laugh and take over. You know, Jesus also made this statement that you cannot experience the kingdom of God unless you actually enter it like a little child. When you look at children, what is one of the common denominators that even from a natural sense, children that I saw, they laugh over 500 times a day. Whereas what happens when you become adult, it's six. Something happened in between that time frame. And that ought not be. Joy is a regular part of our life. And it even talks about a merry heart or a joyful heart does good like medicine. So joy for you and I, especially in the season that we're in, joy is crucial for you and I just to keep our sanity. <laughs> okay. So let me just mention this one more time. How does joy come from the believer? By hearing what Jesus has spoken. 
That's why Jesus said again, John 15, 11, I have told you these things so that my joy and my delight may be in you. So Jesus is speaking for you. Why is he giving us these words? Why is he sharing these truths with us? So that his joy, his joy and his delight may be found on the inside of you. Now I also want to give you a little warning where we're at today. There is an attack from the enemy to take and to steal your joy. I remember heard saying this, if, the, if you, the, the devil can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. I'm refusing to go down a road that's not filled with joy. I will not do it. And let me just give you this, this thought here. But there is a spirit of distraction that is running rampant right now in the church. And remember that we aren't called to renew our minds in theories, to Facebook doctrines and YouTube videos. We need to renew our mind in the word of God. Don't miss what God is wanting to deposit in you by focusing on the wrong thing. Stay focused as there are many voices speaking loudly right now. Make sure you are tuning your ears to hear the voice of your father. Why? Because there's an enemy after your joy. And the spiritual force of joy, again, is so powerful. It's what sustains you and I. It's what keeps you. Even what the encouragement that came this morning before we worshiped, in song was, having done all to stand, stand. How can you continue standing and be persistent and continue to do the same thing, speak the same thing, even though it looks crazy out here? How can we still stand strong and worship God? How can the worship team continue to do what they're doing? How can we continue to worship God effectively? Joy is the absolute source for all of this. And how do we know this? Because, again, that's what he just says is the fruit of the Spirit. It's a spiritual force that you and I need to take us from, God, I'm, I need to see this happen in my life. In Jesus' name, amen, to there it is. The joy is what sustains you till you see it manifested in your life. Now, Proverbs 4.23, I want to bring this out. There's an attack, as I said, from the enemy to steal your joy. And so Proverbs 4.23 says these words. He says, above all, guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellsprings of life. Okay? Now, let's look at this here for a moment. This verse is telling us to guard the special forces that are in me. What are the special forces? What are the affections that are on the inside of my heart? It's everything that we read in Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. The love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, temperance. All of those things, what the word of God is telling us, see that a special treasure that you own in your heart, it belongs to you. The love of God, the joy of God, the peace of God, the patience of God, long-suffering, all these things are treasures for you and I to experience victory. And what God is telling you and I is protect those things. The same way, maybe you got some precious things in your own home. What, I mean, some, there's some things that I got that are precious to me. Maybe, you know, like my son made it for me or whatever. Jamie gave it to me. And so what do you do with these precious things? You actually put them away in a, in a safe spot so that they don't get harmed or, you know, disrupted in any kind of way. Well, the same thing, this is what God is telling us. He's saying that guard the affections of your heart. Why? Because it's going to determine what's coming out of you. Life doesn't happen to you. Life happens from within you. So you and I, this is why the word, this is why we're seeing what we're seeing out there. It's trying to put pressure on us to get us to snap. It's trying to put pressure on us to get us just to react in a certain way. When in fact, this is why the word tells us to guard the affections of your heart. Because again, life doesn't happen to you. Life is happening from within you. It is crucial that we pay attention. So all of these forces, and specifically the force of joy is under attack by everything we're seeing. We have to guard our heart to make sure we are not losing our joy. How do we guard our heart and these special forces? And again, specifically joy. We have to be now, here it is, selective by what we are seeing and what we're listening to. How do I guard my heart? How do I protect my joy? I am now very selective by what I'm watching and by what I'm listening to. Because what I'm listening to and what I'm watching will determine what's going on on the inside of me. Anybody ever spent you know, enough time on Facebook watching a couple of videos or something like that, and you all of a sudden find yourself losing your joy real quick? Take notice of that. What's it trying to do? It's meant to rob you of your joy. It's meant to take it away from you. That's the enemy's plan. And if he can take your joy, he's got you. Because again, here's, the thing, here's that quote I love. is a gentleman, Jerry Savelle. He said, if the devil can't steal your joy, he cannot keep your goods. And that's so crucial, so crucial. Now, Proverbs 4, got a couple more verses here for you, 20 through 22. 
says this, just to show how do we guard our heart. He says, listen to the Father. He's saying, listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you and pay attention to all that I have to say. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then verse 22 says, as you unwrap my words, notice what they're going to do. They will impart true life and radiant health into the very core of your being. This is what the Word of God is able to do. If you will give it the time of day, if you'll give it the special attention it deserves, when you guard it, you're watching what you're listening to and what you're seeing, if you'll take a careful consideration, the Word of God has the ability to impart true life into you and I and radiant health to every fiber of your being. That's, that's powerful. And that's what everybody's looking for. They're looking for real life, and they're looking for health from the inside out. Now, as we said, the news and media is there to rob you of your joy, so you got to give our attention to the Word of God for maximum joy. Why is this important? Because the enemy is terrified of a believer that refuses to lose their joy. What is Satan going to do with someone who keeps on rejoicing no matter what comes their way? Nothing. There's nothing he can do. You know, it says this in Job chapter 5, 22. It says, at destruction and famine, you will laugh. (laughs) So all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. Something happens here. Guess what you do? You laugh at it. Now, the world's ways, again, looking back at what Jesus said, why did the unbelieving world hate them? Because I'm not living by the world's ways anymore. I'm going by God's ways. The world's ways, when all hell breaks loose, and, you know, crap hits the fan, what do we do? (laughs) Why is this so? And you blame, and you get frustrated, and you, ah! God's way is, you look at it, and you laugh at it. Does it make sense naturally? Not at all. And that's why James tells us, count it all joy. You have to consider it or count it that way, because is it actually joyful what you're going through? No, but you're going to consider it joyful because you know something. What do you know? That the testing of my faith is going to produce endurance. And when my endurance has a chance to work, at the end of it, when it's fully tested and run its course, I will be fit, lacking nothing in my life. That's the power of joy. Joy is able to sustain you, you and I all the way throughout this. Now, let me just give you a quick example. But Satan, when, when hated Paul, even when he would just wake up, because no matter what came his way, Paul would constantly laugh. He wrote three quarters of the New Testament, a lot of it from prison, and one of them in particular, the book of Philippians, we all know it to be called the book of joy. And where did he wrote that? I remember I was, again, this was a while ago, Jamie and I went to Europe and we went to Rome and intentionally went to go to the Mamertine prison. That's where Paul wrote the book of Philippians. And you see the conditions of those jails. It's not like anything today. The condition of that jail at that time where the, the, the prison was, it was underneath, you know, it's kind of, it's weird when you go there because it used to be the very top of where, uh, like, the emperor would be. So it's kind of the... It would be on top of a hill, but they would be at the very bottom. And all the sewage from the, the castle, the sewage from where the emperor stayed, it would all go into this one area where the prisoners were, and he would be tied up. And so what it would be chained up, his hands would be in shackles above, and sewage would just come. And a lot of times, prisoners in that time, they would die drowning in just the sewage. So at this time, Paul is hanging there. He was there for four months four months standing in this sewage and you, you you know you get the smell you get the look of it and there he is standing for four months with his hands chained up and he wrote the book of philippians in that prison and in that time and we know it in philippians 4 4 he says rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice if paul can write that letter then surely we can be excited and joyful christians now Last verse that I want to share with you is Philippians chapter 1, verse 28. I want to just show you the words of Paul here. Man, this is a, this is a powerful word. He says this, And do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated in anything by your opponents and adversaries. For such constancy and fearlessness will be a clear sign a proof or a seal of them of their impending destruction, but a sure token and evidence of your deliverance and salvation and that from God. What is is Paul saying this? What is the Spirit of God through Paul saying this? You and I, our countenance shows the devil if he's winning or not. 
You know, I remember seeing, I watched the boxing match, and actually it was Rocky. You could watch the Rocky movies. And one of the examples that you see in there, Rocky's fighting a guy in there, and this guy just starts beating him up to a pulp. Like, a lot of times Rocky would just be standing there, guys are just wailing at him. And there's a couple scenes where all of a sudden he looks up at him, spits the blood from out of his mouth, and he goes, come on, do it again. As the enemy, or as the other one that's fighting him, what does that do to him? Oh, shoot. Oh, like, man, this guy, this guy can take it. You and I, it's the same way. When these more and more restrictions, or if they want to pile more stuff on, you and I, our response, our first response to it will ultimately be the way that it's going to be the outcome for you and I. Our first response ought to be, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's in me. This is what he came. I have permanent access into the grace of God. That should be my first thought. My joy is not dependent on what's open, what's not. My joy is completely founded in my relationship with Jesus Christ as my Lord, but also as my friend. That's what I'm rooted and grounded in. So church, this is a great opportunity for you and I to not only demonstrate the kingdom of God, but also to reveal it in the world that we are a part of. What would happen if the church became full of joy during the season rather than living ticked off? And again, that's not to say what's going on is wrong. I understand that. But you and I, we've got to go and elevate ourselves to a higher level of thinking. I operate from another realm. What's that other realm? It's full of joy in the kingdom of God. It's not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, joy in the Holy Spirit. You and I, we are a church full of joy and a church that can't, will not lose its joy. The devil can't take things away from you and I. We refuse that. We are a church. Impact Life Church is a church of joy. We are going to allow uh, whatever's coming our way. We are going to demonstrate the absolute coming destruction of what the enemy tries to bring for evil. God is going to turn it around for you and my good. And how is that going to happen? You and I, we stay joyful. Amen. In closing, let me say this to you and I. So let's operate from this other realm. Jesus qualified you and I to be there. Stir up that joy on the inside of you. It's there. It's there. It may be, you know, gagged in the basement, but you got to lift it up. Sometimes you got to just prime that pump a little bit and just start laughing. All of a sudden, pain tries to hit your body or a circumstance comes at you or a job thing comes at you. What's our response? Ha, ha, ha. Come on, practice it with me. Ha, ha, ha. They say this against me. Bring it on. Ha, ha, ha. I refuse to go down the world's ways, and I'm choosing to go God's ways because his ways are always working out well. What does it say again? Last verse, Psalm 2, 8, it says that he sits in the heavens and he laughs. Joy is the serious business of heaven. So I want to encourage you, if you don't like laughing down here, it's going to be real awkward when we get up there because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to just be laughing hardcore. Amen. So let me just pray over you, Father. I want to thank you so much for your word, that it is powerful, it is active. Lord, you said you watch over your word to perform it. So, Father, we thank you right now for, we're going to take this time, this season that we're in, as an opportunity for great joy. We are choosing to rejoice in you. We are choosing to rejoice in what you've said. We are choosing to rejoice in the finished work of Jesus and what he did on the cross. Father, we choose to celebrate, to rejoice because we have you and you gave us your very joy. We thank you for it, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome, everyone. Thanks so much. And here's Javen. Awesome. Thank you so much, Pastor Joel. And that's one thing that I really, really admire about our pastors is that their passionate joy is always on such a high level. So I'm so very thankful for our pastors. Thank you so much. Um, but today, I'm here for offering, and I'm very excited to share this awesome scripture with you. It's found in Proverbs chapter 21, verses 25 and 26. It says this, Taking the easy way out is the habit of a lazy man, and it will be his downfall. All day long, he thinks about all the things that he craves. For he hasn't learned the secret, that's a key word, the secret that the generous man has learned, which is extravagant giving never leads to poverty. And that's one thing I'm just so thankful for is that God never hides his secrets. They're always right there for us to discover right here in the word. It is never hidden from us. It's right there. And that secret in this scripture is that giving will never lead to poverty. So maybe, so maybe you're just like, you're here and you're, maybe you're lacking in some things. Maybe you're lacking in time. So one thing that you could do, you could sow some time and what will you reap? You'll reap time, right? 
So it's the same thing with, with finances. If you're lacking in that area, maybe it's time just to relearn that secret that God showed us in the scripture, and it's giving. If you give, God will give back to you. So, so um, yeah, so if you're lacking in finances, it's time to relearn that secret, which is extravagant giving never leads to poverty. This is what the Word of God says, and here at Impact Life Church, we believe the Word of God is the final authority, so we can stand on that scripture and believe God for the things that we are looking for. Amen. So God is so good. Uh, so I just want to give you just some, some ways to give to Impact Life Church. Number one, you can go to impactlife.ca and hit the Give tab, and from there you can follow the instructions. Number two, you can drop it off at Impact Life Church or mail it in. And you can find our address on our website as well. Or number three, you can go to the App Store and download the Church Center app and look for Impact Life Church. And then from there, you can follow the promptings of the screen. So just want to say thank you so much for your giving and your generosity. And let's just quickly pray. Father, first and foremost, we are just so thankful for who you are. We absolutely love you and we adore you. Father, as we give into Impact Life Church today, Father, we believe that we will receive it back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, Father. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I trust that you have been encouraged and challenged again today. And <clears throat> just before you check out today, um, just wanted to mention a couple of things. And the big one is is this that you know pastors joel and jamie shared briefly about what it's going to look like this week so probably already you've seen the video on on facebook you have uh potentially received an email with some information on what's going on this week and we just want you to know that uh we we want you to register and we want to see as many people out at those uh time slots that are allotted throughout this coming week. And so again, just go to impactlife.ca and right there you can go under uh, service reg registrations and that's where you can um, fill in your name and we'll know that there is the, uh, the right amount of people coming for these times. And so we just really want to encourage you to do that. Um, this coming week, it's going to be a great week of prayer, of, of just uh, really really digging deep into, into the Lord and what he has for our church. So we trust that you're going to do that this week. And so other than that, just want to say again, happy Mother's Day, and we trust that you have a great week, and we will see you throughout the week.